So here at PB Tech, we have a lot of laptops. In fact, we stock hundreds of different models. And if you're looking at getting a laptop, it can be a little overwhelming trying to pick one. So we thought today we'd take a few of our popular models and compare them to give you an idea of what you should be looking for when buying a laptop. Now, these days, the sweet spot seems to be between $1,600 to $2,000 for a modern laptop with great features like a touchscreen and a thin and light design. So here we have five models sitting between those price points. So from least expensive to most expensive, we have the HP ProBook 430G5, the Lenovo Mix 510, Dell Inspiron 5579, the HP Elite 840 G3, and the Surface Laptop i5. And we've upgraded that to Windows 10 Pro from Windows 10S. And we're going to be looking at what this price range will offer you in terms of design and build quality, portability, screens, performance, and battery. So the way it's going to work is we're going to give five points to first place, one point to fifth, and we'll do this for all five categories, and then we'll run it through a high-tech algorithm, and then top it off with an overall winner of value for money. All right, let's go. Now, in terms of build quality, most modern laptops are pretty sturdy. Usually a plastic housing like we see here on the HP and the Dell. And they have a traditional laptop design, with the Dell looking like a beast thanks to that 15.6-inch screen. Uh, they can put up with a bit of a beating, realistically should survive minor drops, but we're starting to see more and more modern devices these days being made from metal. The Lenovo Mix is a two-in-one. So that's the whole laptop there in this tablet-like form factor. And the front part protects the screen and also has a keyboard and a trackpad built in. The housing is made from metal, which makes it physically a bit stronger. Surface laptop, on the other hand, is leagues ahead in the materials they use. So it's an aluminum casing that's strong and lightweight. And uh, the keyboard deck is made from Alcantara, a very luxury design, and the Surface Book takes the cake with design and build. Now screens are another very important part of the experience. This is your window into your content, and overall screen size determines how portable the device will be. If you're looking to take this with you to work, or to class, or even just around the house, picking something that's thin and lightweight makes this a whole lot easier. So you need to think about the size you want. 13 to 15 inches gives you a good amount of space to work on, while keeping the overall form factor small enough to fit in the bag. It also depends on how you plan to use your machine. As you can see, the Dell Inspire on here, which is a business laptop by the way, has a massive 15.6 inch screen, which makes this laptop a little too big to be carrying around all day. But if you want to use it in the office, a body this big can fit a lot more specs and you can still carry it from your desk to a meeting room. Uh, now both the HPs and the Surface laptop sit around 13 inch screen size, and this is a good size for carrying around. The Surface laptop is noticeably lighter and thinner than both the HPs, but they're all very portable. The Lenovo Mix, on the other hand, being a two-in-one, makes it super easy to chuck in a bag and carry around. The only downside with this form factor is the keyboard doesn't feel as nice as one built into the laptop. It's also the only one not to be backlit, but it gets the job done and could be a worthy trade-off for the extra portability. All right, so next is screens. And uh, there's a few things to note about screens. The first is resolution. The HP EliteBook is the only unit to have a screen under 1080p. Personally, I think that resolution is too low. 1080p is a good standard to strive for, but I don't know. You may be a person who doesn't care too much about resolution, and in that case, HP does offer great specs and at a lower price because you don't have to pay for the high resolution display. But sitting at next to these other screens, you can definitely notice the clarity of the other models, especially with, once again, that Surface Laptop that sits a bit higher than 1080p, and it's 3 by 2 aspect ratio giving the screen a taller look. But other than resolution, you want to look for screen brightness and view angles. So turning the screen left to right as well as up and down, you can see the colors shift a little bit. Both the Lenovo and the Surface Laptop had very good view angles and brightness. Uh, and then with the HPs, the EliteBook seemed to be slightly better than the ProBook. Having them all lined up like this, I found the Dell Inspiron seemed to have the dimmer screen and some of the colors were a little off, but all these laptops actually look pretty good on their own. Now, a touchscreen is not completely necessary, but uh, there are a bunch of things that are just better with touch, like accessing the toolbar, scrolling down long pages, note-taking, drawing, and most modern home and study laptops actually have touchscreens these days. All these models here have them. These become a whole lot more useful when paired with a pen or a capacitive stylus. The Lenovo Mix is the only unit that comes with one in the box, with 248 levels of pressure sensitivity, and it performs quite well for most tasks. The Surface Laptop has support for Microsoft Surface Pen. It's not included in the box, it's another $160 purchase on top of the laptop. 
but for that $160, you get double the levels of pressure sensitivity at $4096, which means you get more precision and a finer control while also requiring a lighter touch, which when you're trying to replicate the feeling of pen on paper makes a difference. It's one of the best styluses out right now, so if you need to annotate documents like drawing or you just like navigating with a pen, that little extra could be worth it for you. Once again, the standout overall for view angles, resolution, brightness, color reproduction was the Surface Laptop. Followed closely by the Lenovo Mix, which has a very impressive display across the board. Okay, so about time we jump into performance. Running 3D Mark CloudGate, we can get an overall score of the power inside these machines. Now to keep things fair, we had to run all the benchmarks at the resolution of our lowest machine here. And um, here's how they ranked. So the Dell Inspiron actually smashed this one. Surface Laptop came in close behind, and then the Lenovo, our second cheapest, actually came in third. Can you believe it? Now something very important on a laptop is battery life. So we ran a Final Fantasy benchmark on loop. Battery set to max performance, max screen brightness, Wi-Fi on, all that. Most of the laptops ran out of juice pretty close to each other with the Dell tanking first, quickly followed by the Surface Laptop, and then the Lenovo about 20 minutes later. But damn, both the HP computers are ace. The EliteBook died about the same time as our GoPro, and the ProBook was still powering through well after everything else, still sitting at around 16%. Again, this is probably due to the lower resolution display, but uh, both HP models came out on top, so HP must be doing something right. So, who came out on top? Let's look at value for money. Taking the placements of each of these models over all the categories and factoring in price, here's the results. So the EliteBook, while being a great laptop and even coming second in the battery life test, has unfortunately fallen short compared to the other machines here. Fourth place, we have the Dell Inspiron. This model mostly fell short due to the portability and battery performance, but it's a business laptop. It benchmarked the highest, and if it's gonna be used around the office, it could be a great choice. Third, we have the HP ProBook. This is another great choice as long as you can live with that screen sitting under 1080p. Which, let's be honest, most people probably could. It topped the battery life test and it's the cheapest out of all these models, so good job HP. Now, second goes to the Surface Laptop, which makes Lenovo the winner. Now, you're probably thinking, what? The Surface Laptop and Lenovo would neck and neck the whole way through, and that's true. Obviously, out of all the models we looked at here, the Surface Laptop is really nice. It's got a luxury and light design, the screen on it is amazing, and it had pretty top-notch performance. But the Lenovo Mix, solid build, it's extremely portable, the screen was right up there with the Surface, similar battery, slightly less performance, but in the end, it's 400 bucks cheaper. Anyway, thanks for watching. We hope you find this video helpful when trying to pick a laptop in the future. If you did, leave us a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to see more. I'm Eli from PB Tech and I'll catch you next time.